Hello, everyone. Hey, we got our first time, not first, not second, not third, the third time champs coming in. Providence Academy, they are going to be the first three time champs on the championship series. Only fitting. Let's kick it over to them. If you don't know their names by now, I can't help you, but let's have them introduce themselves for the people that don't. Let's kick it over to Coach. Coach Getz, um, this is my seventh year coaching, and I'm going to kick it over to the oldest captain. I'm going to go to Hope Counts. I'm Hope. I'm a junior now. So yeah, going to be a senior captain. Who are we kicking it over to, Hope? Um, Madden. Um, I'm mad. Wait, what do I say? Say your name. You can say your grade. You can say how many championships you've won. Any of it. Um, I'm Madden. I'm going to be a junior next year, and I won three championships. <laughs> Who's next? I'll kick it to Kenna. I'm McKenna. I'm going to be a senior next year. And I'll kick it to Beckett. I'm Beckett. I'm going to be an eighth grader next year, and I'm going to kick it to Ari. I'm Ari. I'm going to be an eighth grader next year. Okay. And by the way, people, we're just going to call this the nickname team. Two of them are missing, but we're going to run through the nicknames real quick. We got C Money coaching them. We got Handshake Homie Hope. We got Shifty Schaefer off the bench, sixth player. We got Bucket Greenway. We got Air Ari soaring through the air. Two that are not here at this moment. One might join us. We have Dynamo Emma. We have Hot Hand Honaker hitting the big shot. And then we have the Microwave, the Magician, the Magnificent, the Madden Greenwood with us today. But let's, let's say we got the nicknames out of the way. We can get started. I want to go all the way back to the beginning of the season. I came to a practice. I'm going to kick it to Madden for this. I asked the question, do we talk about a three-peat? Do we not? You said, absolutely, we talk about it. It's the goal. Anything short of that, you know, it's gonna. we're not going to fall short of that. What had you the most confident about this team and your teammates that the three-peat was, it was three-peat or bust? Um, I would say, like, the way that we started off the season, we kind of, obviously, winning two before this, we know, like, we knew what it t uh, took to kind of, um, win a state championship and just how much work we had to put in and obviously this year was the hardest I think we can all agree that everyone you know wanted to see us get beat obviously you know with us winning two in a row but I just think with the experience that we had and then with new girls coming in like Kenna who just came off the uh Kenna and Becca just coming off the bench and being ready to play when the moment like when the moment was right so I think it was just kind of set up perfectly for us this year and we had that extra level of just with Brooke being a senior you know she wanted it more and yeah it was just set up for success. Now we'll go to the other side. When I asked Coach about 3 Pete, he said, don't say that, don't mention it. We take it day by day. Coach, not that you didn't believe in them, but what was your going into the season? You knew these are the things we have to kind of shore up. We had to clean up. We had to make sure we had, you know, kept improving on as the season went on. We are uh, crazy young. So we also had some new people coming into it. So as much as Madden said that we, you know, we know what it takes. We also have some kids that don't know what it takes and they were stepping into new roles. Ari was a new starter this year and that played huge for us. Um, you know, took on a big role in McKenna's first time back in basketball for the last two years. Like it's just been a big stretch. So um, the whole idea was just like stay one game at a time. Our schedule was harder than it's ever been. Um, Blakeville North, Hopkins, Minnetonka, uh, Alexandria, Benil, like the list goes on and on. We played 12 state tournament teams. So uh, we really wanted to challenge ourselves, but I just didn't want us to think too far ahead. Uh, because winning games in November, December is awesome. But uh, as coaches, we have the goal of winning games in March too. And I think all these girls really kind of locked into that. Obviously the season's long. We had our ups and downs. We had times when we don't want to show up to practice and, you know, after school or we want to don't want to do weight room, but they were super dedicated to it and all the hard work has paid off. Um, and they're already texting me about like, Hey, I'm already getting in the gym. I'm already doing this. I'm super excited. So um, they're really hungry again for next year, which is going to be even more fun. Hope, I want to start out with you. You had the unique ability to have one with two sisters, one with one sister. You were the last remaining count sister. What was their, their two advice going into this year when they weren't going to be on the court with you? Still supporting from the stands, but what was their advice when they weren't on the court with you this year for you this year? They both actually texted me huge paragraphs right before the game, <laughs> um, different timings. But mainly it was like, keep calm, trust your work. Like if you put all this effort in, it's going to, it's going to pay off and be aggressive and just like have the calm in your heart, but then work hard and be aggressive. Speaking of the sister theme, Bucket, Beckett, 
What was it like coming in? You're coming into a two-time champ, seventh grader. Was it nervous? Was it exciting? You know, kind of what did Big Sister give you the advice? What kind of advice did Big Sister give you? It was very intimidating at first, but she, like, sometimes is just, like, you don't need to have, like, the, as many points, like, as anyone else on the team. And, but just, like, do what you need to do and, like, be a lockdown defender, like, pass. You don't need to have all the points. And she just really helped me with, like, confidence and, yeah. Okay, now, Madden, I got to ask, because she said lockdown defender. Was anyone else as excited when Beckett drew a charge? on Ava Zedeker in the game against Dowling. Was anyone else ready to jump off the on the court? Because it was just me. Because that was amazing. Yeah, well, I think, yeah, I mean, I was pretty excited for her, for that to be her first game and for her to have that defensive assignment is kind of crazy, like, as a seventh grader. But I don't think she really realized how good Ava Zedeker kind of was, which was kind of good, I think. She was kind of oblivious in the best way. And she went on and took that charge, which, I mean, obviously was pivotal point of the game, huge points, so. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I was really excited. I think I screamed probably, so. You definitely yeah. screamed. If you look at the highlight, you were just like <laughs> standing over the top of her screaming in her face. That was probably scarier than taking the charge itself. I mean, in all well, fairness, if you look on the stand, I probably would be on the same court side. Any, Ari, so coach said we come into a starting role. You know, last year kind of off the bench, kind of, you know, kind of feeling your way through. This year, starter, you know, with expectations and stuff like that. What was that like for you this year? Um. It was really fun, like getting, you know, obviously do the handshakes, but anyway, it was just like fun, just like do tips, start off the game, and hopefully this help you on the first run, you know, and yeah, it was just good because you can kind of see the game from like start to finish and like how you started it and how like every play from the first, like the first thing is more like the same as the last, so. I like it. McKenna, you were that burst off the bench every game, you know, First year back playing basketball after a few years. What was kind of your mentality coming in for this team, kind of for this season? Kind of what, how did you walk us through that a little bit? You know, I didn't really know what to expect going into it. I know I talked to coach a little bit before the season, but I didn't really know what my role would be. And I was ready to accept any role I was given. And throughout the season, I just wanted to get better. And I would stay after practice as much as I could and just work on more moves to get the touchback that I hadn't been getting the last two years and the first few games are very nerve-wracking um obviously it's a big environment the teams we play and everything but I think just having like all my teammates and like the coaches behind me it helps like to take the nerves away and just have go out and have fun I love it so coach the season starts what was your first game that it was like, oh, teams are coming for us this year from your perspective? Uh, game one was really mm -hmm. intense. So Dowling, like we we have never beaten them. Um, so that was fun to go out and beat them. First Minnesota school, though, was honestly been ill. So the second game, um, they were defending 3A champs. We were defending 2A champs. Um, you know, every single game in Minnesota, it always felt like someone was bringing their best. Um, and we, we love that. It brings up the intensity level. Obviously, we wish they would sometimes take it easy, but uh, we know that's not sports. We know that's not the competitive part of it. But um, every environment we went to, uh, away game, we felt like everyone gave us their best, which was a ton of fun. And, uh, yeah, from opening game to the last game of the season, we, we experienced it all, and they threw everything at us. Beckett, what was your welcome to varsity moment? Was it the Ava Zedeker game? Was it a little bit down the road? What was your first, like, oh, I'm on varsity basketball moment? I feel like the first game, it was kind of like a wake-up call, like, okay, it's not travel anymore. But I feel like halfway through the season, I started getting more comfortable with it, and it wasn't, like, as nerve-wracking, obviously, as, like, the first game. Fair. Madden, what was your first realization that, oh, everyone's coming for us this year at the two-time champs moment? Um, I would, I mean, every game, like coach, that was kind of, you know, you felt that kind of energy shift in teams kind of, you know, they picked it up. Seems teams seemed like never miss versus us, which obviously kind of, we realized that they're coming for us. But honestly, when we went up to Albany, that was kind of, I mean, before that we had felt that and even like in Hopkins, but never in like a two-way game had I felt that energy like I did in Albany. And I mean, obviously we got the loss, which we took very personal. Clearly we wrote it on the board, like I've said, and, you know, we looked at, we reminded of it every day. 
but I mean that that energy like you could just feel no one in that gym really wanted us to win and it, I feel like it helped us from that moment on like in the locker room after we were like we have to stick together through everything and that was that just really opened up my eyes to wow you know everyone kind of wants to beat us so fair so we'll go hope we'll ask you we're at we'll get to the we're at the Albany game man so that's we're at the Albany game. What was the emotions like going into it, leading up to it? And then what was some of the emotions that you experienced like during the game? It was an intense, I was in there and that place was packed. Yeah. So obviously we had that huge, like long drive up there. It's like, like all the nerves in my stomach had the whole time to prep for this game and this huge game, like the state tournament rematch. And I was like, no, if we lose it, like that's, that's something like, usually it's like, oh, we lose like whatever. But this time it mattered. And um, I was not going to lie, I went into that game not physically feeling good, but I was mentally like, I just want to, I, I want to win. I want to give it my all. Um, but I def, definitely, that was a lot of nerves. But I think we ended up um, using the nerves in certain categories. But it was definitely, and since we were there so early, we got to see the JV crowd which I've never seen a JV crowd be so big, but it was huge. So I had that already prepping for our huge game. So, yeah. Yeah. I got there as early as you guys did, and I got kicked out of the student section. I was trying to sit courtside, and I got kicked out, just an FYI. We got Hot Hand Honaker here. What's up, Brooke? How are you? I'm good. Sorry I was late. I had, like, technical difficulties. Don't feel bad. Don't worry about it. Trust <laughs> me. That's happened every interview with Prop. We're just going to keep winning championships till we get the Zoom right. Exactly. Want to keep? Yep. And you want to go ahead and introduce yourself, Brooke. You can just say name, grade, position. Um, my name is Brooke Honaker. I'm a senior guard. There we go. And Brooke, we'll have you answer this next question. We've had everyone ask answer a few. When was your moment that you knew this year that hey, teams are coming for you guys? Like they are want to knock you guys off with being the two time champs. Um, I honestly feel like from like the start of everything, like we kind of knew that going into the season, we had this like name on us like we had oh province like back to back state champs so obviously like that's gonna like if if you get a win against them like that's huge so I feel like from the beginning of it all we kind of knew that teams were going to come for us and they were going to always give us their best game and just always like play their hardest against us because like obviously it'd be amazing to say like oh we beat the back to back state champions so we kind of knew that like preparing for the season mentally and stuff that every game like people are going to give us their best game fair We'll go to Ari and then McKenna. We're at the Albany game, packed gym, nerves all over the place. I mean, just an intense environment. Ari, we'll start with you. What was that like for, from your perspective? Like first time starter? Hey, you're on the court now wearing a Providence jersey. There's no there's no friends out there at that point. Yeah. Well, at first I was like, geez, like there's like a lot of people here. It was super loud just from like the jump. Like I wasn't expecting that. And throughout the game, I feel like the crowd kind of like amps me up more. So it kind of helped me, but it also was kind of, I don't know, it was, I don't know. But yeah, I feel like it kind of helped me play the best I can. Yeah. And what was it like from you? You're like, I'm my first time in varsity and I'm walking into a hornet's nest, walking into Albany gym. Yeah. So it was definitely very nerve wracking. I remember sitting through the JV game and being like, wow, there's, this is already a crowded gym. And then it just like kept getting like, more and more crowded and stepping on the court during warm-ups I was just like really locking in I just made sure like to like tune out the crowd because I've had so many like sports experiences with like crowds that it's like it was kind of just natural I guess and it was kind of similar to like the mini haha game with the big mm -hmm. crowd but it was just once you lock in I or once I lock in I don't even notice the crowd so once I, after I went in the first time, the the most scary part is like sitting on the bench waiting to go in. <laughs> and then once you're in for a few minutes, it's like all the nerves go away and you just play. So coach, from your perspective, I know that you plan, you over plan, you replan, you have the game plan down to a science. What was some of your worries going into that game? And how did you kind of focus on keeping them at ease in that kind of environment? um that was probably the first game of the year that was that was the biggest crowd like we played in front of and then from that point on like 
we had huge crowds. So like mini ha ha, um, at both times, Maple Grove at our place was absolutely massive. I mean, this was, we went up to Alexandria and their coach was like, this is the biggest crowd we've ever had. So that game was kind of our awakening. It's like, Oh, people want to come watch us play or they want to come see us lose or whatever it might be. <laughs> um, we are bringing people into the arena, which is a ton of fun. I don't think we could ever really prepare um, for what that environment's like. Uh, what student sections will say, what it feels like when you are at the free throw line and you feel like all those eyes on you. Uh, we try to replicate that stuff in practice. We try to, you know, put pressure free throws on. We try to, try to play music, um, you know, make things interesting. We try to make things so mad at the free throw line. I try to have um, Beckett say something to her in her ear or like, you know, just do, do something to mess up your teammates just to try and simulate the pressure. But we can't ever do that. Um, so it just came down to the preparation and how much work these girls had put in. Uh, I came down to kind of trusting that preparation. Similar to the state championship game, we were down uh, against Albany, kind of big, like 10, 11, 12, um, towards the end of that half. And then we came back, and Madden hit Emma on a backdoor layup, and we got a one-point lead. And that was huge with, like, under a minute left. So um, it's just their preparation. You know, they trust the process. They trust all their work that they've been doing. Um, you know, and they, they've worked for moments like that, and they've earned them. So that's there's nothing really special about it other than the the talent that these girls have is that they're special so they're able to fight through all that adversity brooke you've talked about it a few times i've been on here what's it like having a coach that you can like in the you know storms going crazy the place go, place is going nuts everyone's kind of cheering either against you or just in general what's it like knowing you have a coach you can turn to that's kind of like the calm for all you guys that's kind of like the center that's kind of centers everything what's that like from your perspective um, it's like a very nice thing to have because I feel like like in those pressure situations where, where everything is like chaotic, like obviously like everyone wants someone to like turn to, to just have them be like, like, it's okay. Like relax. And I feel like all the time you see it from the sideline coaches, I was like, Hey, like relax. Like you're okay. Like we always like, he prepares us really well in practice and stuff like as to the best that we can to try to prepare for those moments. And like when we feel like that, but I feel like just like knowing that you know, it's not like if you make a mistake or like if in those high pressure moments, like you're anxious or whatever, like, like, it's okay. Like you're going to get calmed down. It's like, just like the reassurance and like it, like being told to you, I feel like that's something just as big as it, like in itself. And then to, I don't know, like, I feel like we all have a really good relationship with our coach. So just to like have that. And it's like, that's amazing. And that's like something that everyone would love to have. So just like knowing that is a good feeling. Fair. Madden, I got to ask. During the game, it seems like it's kind of a constant conversation between you and coach. What would you say he's best at a kind of calming you down or is he best at kind of just knowing exactly what you need? Kind of describe during a game what coach is like with you. Um, well, I would say obviously we always, like you said, are always talking. Every free throw, I'll come over and either discuss what is like working or he'll tell me, you know, like stuff that he sees or I'll tell him stuff that I see. Like if, you know, I feel like as I've gotten older, I've gotten better at recognizing offenses and we can kind of like talk about that and just have that connection. Um, Obviously, I mean, he's helped me so much with that. I used to just kind of look to him for guidance and now I can kind of help him like, you know, see, like tell him what I'm seeing or what's kind of working. And obviously he makes changes on the fly, which is huge, but he also helps me like I, you know, as we all know, I get pretty into the game. So he helps me in situations where, you know, maybe I'm in my head or the crowd's getting to me a little bit, like in games where it's kind of hard to tune them out. Um, He just kind of helps me calm down. And he's like, you know, just possession by possession. And in state, he was like, you can't let anything else get to you. Like you have to, you know, we're starting this comeback and we can do it as long as we stick together. And I think um, we've just kind of both helped each other, like kind of stay in games um, a lot of times because it can kind of get hard for both of us. I know it gets to be a lot, so. Yeah, definitely. We're always in communication. So I just want to yeah. point to the state championship game, your eighth grade year. We're playing Fergus Falls. You look over at me like, what do you want me to do? I said, wait till she comes get you and then go. And then you did that and you scored a layup. Again, state championship game. You look at me is like, what do I do? Hope for last shot. I was like, get the ball and go. And you got the ball and you went. And again, you scored the game winning layup. So it's just funny how like full circle that is. But it, like the communication is still always there, which is really cool. So we've talked about, you know, throughout the year. So now we're going to have coach do this for each player and then we'll turn the tables, of course. So we're going to start with hope coach. Where did you see hope grow the most of the player throughout the season this year? Um, from the first Albany game all the way to the rest of the year, um, that first Albany game really was tough for her because she wasn't feeling great. And then she sprained legitimately both ankles within the span of what, five minutes, maybe. Um, 
And then she still had to get on the floor, um, compete against one of the best posts that I've, we've played against. Alyssa Sands, a monster, and she took on that job personally. Um, so her growth um, from that game has been huge. Against their zone, we had to have her be the playmaker, the creator in the middle. And she stepped up and she did that big time. Um, she's one of the best facilitators from the high post that I've uh, been around. Her sisters are great passers. Um, but she is, she is just like her sisters where she wants to make the path. Sometimes they like to make no look passes, which I'm not always the biggest fan of, but, uh, <laughs> she, she's gotten much better at that. And, uh, also a really good shooter. Her free throw percentage is really high, um, which is not always, um, common for bigger girls. So she does a really good job there. So just huge growth in terms of her confidence and her ability to play against the zone, but also, um, she can defend anybody too. S second in the state in block shots. So that's pretty scary. Now hope Thanks, we're going to. We're going to turn it around now because I'm not going to ask why coach is the best because I feel like we have two videos of people saying that Coach Connor is the best. So we're going to go a little bit deeper than that. Hope, what's your favorite moment from coach this year? On the court, off the court, during a game, after a game, what was your favorite moment of coach this year? There's too many. Um, I should have prepped. This is the warning to the uh, rest of y'all. It's the same question to all y'all. Yeah. Good. You made me go first. Um, I think uh, it could be our last home game. And he, it wasn't playoffs yet. It was the normal season. And he goes, win or go home still. Like, it wasn't – if we lost, we'd still go be home. playing. But we got the mentality earlier. And something in that game was like, oh, we got the dog in us. And I just remember, I remember him saying something about that. And I don't know. It put – it made sense. I like it. Now, Coach, we'll move to Ari. Where did Ari grow the most of the player this year? Uh, sheesh. Like, there's way too many things to describe with that kid's growth. Um, I will point out to one game would be the mini ha, ha game at their place. And she came up to me before the game, says, Coach, I'm not feeling good. Like, something's off. My shot, I just, this, I'm just not, I'm not in it. I'm like, you're good. Just, like, trust it. Just trust it. Like, you're okay. I watched your shot a couple times. And then she goes up and explodes in that game for 26, like mm -hmm. double digit rebounds, just absolutely took over the game for us when we needed it most. Uh, and for an eighth grader in that kind of environment, I mean, we had everybody cheering against us. Uh, we had the Oklahoma City Thunder in that game and she still showed up, balled out. Um, that was insane. So uh, for her to show that kind of growth, like from not feeling great during warmups, something feeling off to game time locked in. All right, her first shot was like a corner three. And she hopped and jumped all the way back. It's so it's one of the coolest <laughs> things to watch on film because she got so hyped and her teammates got super hyped for her. Um, she had a couple and ones during that game. Um, her growth that way, like when when she plays with confidence like that, she's quite honestly unstoppable. Um, she's pretty. She's a pretty special player, athlete, um, and uh, she had inc incredible growth throughout the whole year. Like to think that you did this as a thirteen year old is absolutely unreal. I've been super blessed with girls that have been amazing as middle schoolers to play at the highest level, um, to play against the biggest competition. And she's no exception to that. Oh, my only beef with you, Ari, that game is you had a breakaway. I screamed dunk. No one might've heard me, but I screamed dunk. I was alone in that. But now Ari, what's your favorite moment with of coach this year? On the court, off the court, in a game, out of a game? Um, I was honestly going to say the same thing. Like before that game, I was just like out of it. I was like, I wasn't feeling good. I just wasn't locked in or anything. I just came to the bench and I was just talking to him. And just, he always just has a way just like, it's okay. Like just trust yourself, trust your shot. You're going to do okay. He always just has a way of just like, I don't know, making it better, I guess. So that was probably one of like my best moments because I just did what he said. And then he was right. So. Man, if you get a coach telling him he's right, man, he's now he's going to – Madden, don't let him think he's right all the time. <laughs> we'll go with McKenna. Coach, when did McKenna, how did McKenna grow the most of the player this year? She has done an amazing job. Um, the first time I saw her play in open gym, I was like, oh, okay, let's see what we got. And I remember asking her, I was like, so what do you think? Like, do you want to, like, try varsity right away? Do you want to get warmed up with JV? Like, what are you thinking? Uh, and she's like, oh, I, I think I want to try a JV. And I was like, okay. Played her at JV in the first breakdown event. And I said, I went to her, I was like, hey, you're, we're not doing this anymore. Sorry. Like, you're going to be up with <laughs> varsity. So, um, like, she needed her confidence to grow because she had been out of it for so long. And to see her confidence 
grow and to like see, to the impact that she made on the court uh, it was really cool I'm going to point to the Hopkins game for her um, so we were battling Hopkins up in St. Cloud and obviously an awesome team like one of the best in the state and she came in absolutely fearless like she might not have had the best scoring stat line but she had a nose for the ball she got offensive rebounds she played insane defense um, so the things that she was able to provide and against you know the Hopkins it's now not a rivalry but you know we play them frequently now it's a big game and for her to just step into that environment with no fear uh is really cool and um her growth is she's also really fun to have as a culture kid um, what she's brought to the culture of the team is really cool uh you know we're young so having another kind of upperclassman with the junior is really special to so her personality everything she brought to being a great teammate uh was really really cool too um, her and Beckett have a cool special bond uh, they shot a lot together so that was fun to watch those two um you know Obviously, she has her sister, but uh, McKenna could be kind of be the pseudo sister as well, too, which was fun. McKenna, what's your favorite moment from coach for this year? I don't think I have a specific favorite moment, but I would just say like throughout the year, all the confidence that coach instilled in me and like any time that I was down or like I felt my shot was off, he was always there to help like bring me back up or just like help with anything that I needed. And those were just like my favorite memories throughout. And then obviously winning state, that was a very good memory that I will forever have. Fair. We'll go to, um, and I got to be honest here, Beckett, coach came up with Bucket Greenway. I just stole it. But we'll, we'll go to coach. How did Beckett grow the most throughout this year? First year in varsity. I came into this year like, okay, what can Beckett do? What can she do? Um, and honestly, anything is the answer. So she, her first game she played against Dowling Catholic. Ava Zedeker was her matchup. Ava Zedeker is going to Creighton. Like, she's an insanely talented player. Beckett had no fear. Um, just took on that challenge right away. Uh, then our third game of the year, or fourth game of the year, we're playing Hortonville, and she has to guard Rainey Wilson, who she's giving up maybe a foot of height on, you know, definitely some size, and she did not back down. So, like, Rainey's trying to, like, post her up, and Beckett is fighting and battling and getting around in the post against another kid going to Maryland, right? Um it's insane that she just has no fear and maybe being young um, there's ignorance is a little bit of bliss, but she's not ignorant. Like she's very well, well aware of who these kids are, what they're capable of. And she has no fear, uh, which is special. And then with her, my favorite thing is she is everyone's favorite teammate. Every time she scores, literally everyone explodes off the bench. Uh, Madden might've like torn three different vocal cords. Um, you know, she, she obviously loves it, but every single one of her teammates, celebrates her and that's not just because she's like the young kid it's because of the person she is um she's everyone's favorite teammate like we'll ask some of the girls riding the bus and like oh i just love beckett like i want to sit with beckett um she's got her bus ride buddies she's got everybody that um you know really cares about her and it's because of who she is again it's not it's not because she's the youngest everyone's really um excited for her and her basketball future is absolutely unreal i look at madden seventh grade highlights um, i look at her some of the game film i go oh man like they're very, very close. Like they are very close basketball players. Um, and Madden would, Madden will always say she's better. Um, and <laughs> that's, that's the older sister should. Um, and I'm sure they'll play one-on-one, but uh, Beckett is not far off of where Madden was. Um, and Beckett had to do it against Hopkins, Lake Hill North, uh, Alexandria, Benil, and, you know, Minnehaha, like every single one of these teams. So it's pretty special what she's been able to do. And I've, beyond proud of another again 12 13 year old coming into varsity basketball at the highest level that's insane bucket what's your favorite coach moment from the year probably i have like two top ones but the first game i left my earrings in and i remember i saw coach's face and he was just like no way but also Fair. <laughs> just like the confidence he instilled with me like mckenna said the confidence he instilled in me and like helping me like if I miss a shot right by like the bench he's like it's okay like shoot the next one and it just really helped me throughout the year like not worrying about shooting or like missing or like getting yelled at by like, teammates or anything and yeah there we'll go to Actually, hot hand well, Honaker. I messed up uh oh we my wife and I announced our pregnancy that we were having a girl and Beckett was in tears after we did that. <laughs> and that was honestly hilarious too so I was like oh man she cares a lot so that was pretty sweet um, that might be another favorite moment. Go bucket. Ted, we're going to hot hand Honaker. Coach, where do you see your senior leader, the guard who seems to come up with the biggest threes and the biggest moments, even this year, Minnehaha comes to mind real quick. 
Where did she grow the most of the player this year? Um, the coolest thing about Brooke is that like, as, as much as she's grown, like you asked me about being steady, um, being calm. Brooke is the epitome of calm and steady and never getting rattled. Like no matter the emotions, the intensity of the game, she's just locked in steady. And I think that's unbelievable quality about her. Um, she is also like the kid that I would look to for who's my calming presence. Who can I like, if I'm getting a little worked up, she was the one there. So, uh, her biggest growth was, um, not on the basketball court. She's always been fantastic basketball player. She's always been a fantastic shooter, uh, her leadership and being able to be the senior leader when we lost grace, uh, when we lost Maria, she knew it was this, this was her year to step up. And she knew like when it came down to it, she was the one. So, we're going to go to the championship game, like five for six from three in the championship game and hitting big, timely ones. But um, not only that, it was her defense. Um, she was able to shut down one of their top three scorers. And that was, again, she just knows her. She knew her role. She knew exactly what the team needed from her to win the game. And she just delivered. And that's my most proud moment, obviously. But I'm always proud of these girls. Gosh, I thought I could get to the end without maybe tearing up. I don't know if I can <laughs> Know, That's why we we split it up with each one, but yeah. Brooke, we'll have it your turn. Maybe we can bring them to full tears. What's your favorite moment from this year with from coach? Okay, so mine is from like it was around state tournament time, or it was during it. And so, um, like one thing coach always says to me is like you have the green light. Like no matter if I'm like off or whatever, like it's like the fact that like he still trusts me enough in like my in my shot and stuff. And so. It was before the state semifinal game and we were, we had a shoot around and we were all like loading up on the bus afterwards. And I like came through the gym again and I was like the only one in there. And I, I was like, I was kind of getting sad. I was like, well, I'm like, you know, like all the senior emotions. And so I was just like looking around and like all that stuff. And then I was like thinking about like all my threes and stuff. And I was like, how like coach always tells me that like I have the green light and so I was like just like trust in yourself and trust in your shot because like coach has said it before like I tend to not shoot the best in Williams arena but this year that thankfully changed <laughs> but um I don't know and like the first game like the quarterfinal game I kind of struggled a little bit but then like after um like the semi like from the semifinal game and the final game I was like like thinking just like just like trust in your shot like you have the green light and all that stuff so I feel like like having like that thought in the back of my mind, like, I guess it wasn't like a, like a moment between us, but it was like a mutual like mm -hmm. thing. I don't know. It kind of helped me out. And then coach, I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of thoughts come to mind, but where did Madden grow the most of the player this year? Um, Man, when you think about someone that scored 3000 points before they're a junior um, top, 12 and assists in their career already. Um, the growth is like kind of crazy to think about, right? Like how, how can she get much better every year? Mike Keaton asked me like, Oh, you know, like how much better can she get seventh grade year is 21. I was like, okay, that's really impressive. Like I could never score 21 next year. She blows that up. She averages 30 and then all of a sudden we're like, okay, so we're averaging 34 points now. Like wh what, mm -hmm. what is the, you know, what is the limit? There is never a limit for Madden. Like that's the coolest thing is he, you can't put a number on it that she can't achieve. Um, and anyone that tries to tell her that, oh, you'll never be able to get that. Well, sorry, you just motivated her to go get that. Um, so I'm never going to put a number on uh, that kid or what she can uh, accomplish. Her biggest area of growth was, again, a leader. Uh, so she was a captain as a sophomore. Really hard responsibility. You know, not a lot of people get that at such a young age. And she passed it with flying colors. You know, to not only be like the, the leading scorer is really tough. Um, but what she's able to accomplish, she is uh, special. And I'm going to toot her horn here because um, it's not easy being Madden Greenway. I know a lot of people would love the chance to, they think, oh, I wish I had this. I wish I had that. Um, nothing that Madden's gotten has been unearned. So she's worked for every single thing she's gotten. Um, the amount of followers, um, you know, the, the eyes that are on her are not easy. Um, kids like Paige Beckers will tell you that they, people are waiting on you to fail or waiting on you to make a mistake. And that is so much pressure. And she wears that pressure on her shoulders all the time. Um, it is not easy. So she needs to be given flowers for what she's able to accomplish um, with all eyes. 
sometimes it feels like against her. Um, but I think one of the coolest things about her and one of my favorite things is when we go to away games and little girls are asking for her autograph and she takes time to take pictures, write autographs, um, almost to the point where she's missing the bus because she like cares about like making sure everyone gets seen, everyone gets recognized. Um, she cares about growing the game, just like our amazing girls, basketball players right now. So our Caitlin's, our Juju's, our Pages, uh, Cameron Brink, like she is going to further the game uh, because of how much she cares about it how much she puts into it, how much people want to be like her. So her growth as a human is what I'm always most proud of, um, who she is as a person. That's the coolest thing. Like she can be the best winner of all time to leave Minnesota. That's fantastic. But who she is as a, as a person is really, really special. Thank you. Now, Madden, your turn. He talked you up your turn. What was your favorite memory or memories of coach this year? Um, that's really tough. I feel like we're always making memories, especially in his office. We're always just talking about something. I'm always getting out of class. So, um, I would just say my, I mean, my favorite memory overall was finding out he was having a little girl, like overall, like no matter what, that was my favorite moment. I was like in tears. That was like what motivated me to win that game. Cause we got to find out what the gender was. So that was like, just honestly, like, cause I, he's been there since obviously day one, like I came in as you know, a little seventh grader and he's just helped me grow so much in every part. And the way that I'm like as a person is a huge part to him. So obviously that's huge. Um, but I would also say just like the confidence that he instills instills in me, like a lot of people say. But whenever I'm down on myself or it gets kind of to be too much, like obviously it's like there's parts of the season where mentally it's tough with like just like getting some of the hate that I definitely do get. But the way that he like can kind of speak confidence into me and he sends me like if I have a poor shooting practice or game he sends me like my eighth grade highlights and is like just watch this and like just know like what you're capable of and to get those texts and those like reminders is obviously huge but just all the memories we've made like over the past four years is I've always cherished so and this goes to coach and to Madden and to the players all of you I've been in the arena I've heard the other fans I've heard the other parents I've heard all that you guys usually handle everything with grace you guys handle it with maturity. You guys handle it a lot better than I ever would. I'm just saying. So I want to give you guys a shout out for that. Madden, especially. I, and a lot of it's directed to you. Hope and Ari. I know you guys have had stuff directed. Bucket, Brooke, McKenna, all of you guys. I know that that's come from the leadership of Coach. and I, But I know that's also who you guys are is knowing that, like, don't respond. Don't feed into it. That their issues are their issues. And so I want to commend you guys on that for not letting outside noise come in, diminish what you guys are doing and all that. I just want you to know from where I'm sitting in the stands, we see it. I see it. We will always highlight it. And so just a round of applause for you guys for being able to do that. Now let's get back to state, the fun part. So I said, and I stand by 10 toes down, you guys probably had the hardest run of any of the teams at state. You had Willow, Steel, basically turning into Rebecca Brunson and Maya Moore and one player going off. Then you get the second round. You guys have, I mean, it was a little bit drummed up as the top two scorers in the state, but you still have a player who's an outstanding scorer in Tory. And then we get to the showdown, the rematch for the fourth year at state in a row. I'll ask Ari, what was your emotions? What was your feelings going into that state championship game? Uh oh, did we lose you? I found her. I can't hear a thing you're saying. Can you hear me now? I feel like I'm a cell phone commercial. Hello? Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Uh oh. Okay, we'll come back. We'll come back to you. Oh. <laughs> Hello? Can y'all hear me? We can hear you. I think her Wi-Fi is a little... Okay. Uh, Just making sure. Okay. We'll go to Brooke, the senior leader. This is your fourth time running into Albany after the game that you guys saw earlier in the year. What were the emotions like in that game? Going Leading up to the game. Well, leading up to the game, like, we obviously knew, like, we saw Albany earlier in the year. And so, at least for me, like, people would ask, like, oh, who do you, like, want to play in the state championship game? And I was like, I want to play Albany. Like, I want revenge. Like, I want to beat them again. And obviously, they're a great team. Like, they have amazing players. So, like, I give them a lot of respect for that. And, um, but I just, going into it, I knew it would obviously be a tough game. Like, 
um like we're, we both go head to head a lot so there's like all the hype there but I just I knew that if we like stuck together as a team and just played how we play and like to the best of our abilities that we'd be able to like come out with the win and I feel like it was a lot of just like us against a lot of other people like and so I feel like knowing that we had each other and the trust in each other to just like succeed in that game that was like a huge factor of it all and yeah like obviously like all the hype and stuff but I feel like we did a really good job of just like staying to our game and sticking to what we do best so we'll go we'll go round table here hope was there ever in a moment that, what was the moment in the game or was there a moment in the game where you were like I'm a little nervous right now things aren't looking great I'm a little nervous was there a moment like that or was it full confidence the entire way um I'm not gonna lie I think I was in denial because the whole time Fair. we were down we got down by 18 I kept on shaking my head no no I was like there's no way this is happening so I feel like I can't say I was doubting it but I know deep down I was just I was like there's no way I was like distraught honestly but I think the denial I think part of it gave me confidence I was like Fair. all right let's do it there's no way and I kept on smiling don't know why I it just something told me to I was like there's no way this is happening we have to win and we won so McKenna, how about you? Any doubt anywhere in there? Or were you just like, now nah, we got this? Yeah, I know throughout the game, I saw the lead, or the lead that they had, and I was like, uh-oh, this isn't looking good. But then towards like the final like five minutes, I was sitting, I think I was next to Beckett, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, and I just looked up and I was like, oh gosh, like this cannot be happening. Like we could <laughs> not break like a four-point lead or – the, their four point lead and then I remember Ari followed out and then I went in for the last like seven seconds maybe or something like that it's kind of all of a blur now but um yeah and then I remember they were shooting a free throw and I was like I just need to make the best box out of my life and I re-watched it and I like pushed her all the way back to the elbow and I look over and I see Emma like come in between mm -hmm. me and her grab the rebound, get it to Madden. And then Madden just went down the court. And I was like, like, I was like in shock. And then I was like, wait, we're winning by one. And then, <laughs> yeah. It was just kind of a big, like shock moment. Um, but I was, I was very surprised that we ended up bringing out the lead. How about you, Brooke? How about, you know, that veteran you've been through ups, downs, moments like that. What was your thought? Like ever a nervous moment in there in that state championship game or like, nah, nothing. Um, I would say like, there are obviously times where I was like, okay, hey, we're down by a lot, but I knew that we could like bring it back up and stuff like that. And also I was like, I'm going to do everything I can like to not lose. Like this is my last ever game. Like I like told the team, like, I'm not, like playing in college or anything so I was like I'm not going out like this so I feel like especially like when we kept having the four point leads and stuff like I always like whenever I'm watching like college basketball or like NBA WNBA I'm, I'm always like okay well like they can do it like they can get this lead or you see those crazy comebacks and I'm like okay well that can be us and it turned out to be us but I always like there wasn't a moment where like I was like okay like we're gonna lose I was like no like we're gonna give it all we have and like that's how like the game's going to come down to it. And when Maddie made that final layup, I, <laughs> I, I, there's a picture of us and we both have like our hands in our head. We're like crying. Like we couldn't believe it. And I, I told her, I was like, I've never loved you more than I've, I've loved you. <laughs> but it was just like crazy. And like kind of said, it was like, it was a shock, but I, I always knew deep down that we could, we could do it. Brooke, Caitlin Clark, Honaker, because what one three you hit at the end was deep. I mean, you might have been on the M. I'm just saying. Ari, we got you back. We got you. Bro. Can you hear us? Maybe. Can you hear me? Uh oh. You can hear me. Okay. We just got to hear you, and then we'll be we'll be rocking. There's Ari. We got two Aries. Okay. Let's see how this works. You good? We got a minute. We got microwave still to go. While we get Ari's vocals going, we're going to head to Madden. So 3,000 points. Talked about the 3 P. You're in the state championship game. You know, at one point down 18. 
ever any nerves, ever any worry, ever anything, or was it just we got this? Um, I, mean, I was definitely I'm not not one to like get kind of think we're gonna lose ever. Like I always think we're gonna win games, but for sure in the first half, I mean, I've never seen. I've played against them a lot as we all have, and I've never seen them shoot quite like they did. And I was like, oh shoot, mm-hmm. I was like, they really they don't want to go out with a loss, which I mean, as a senior, I know like Brooke was obviously saying she's like well, I don't want to lose my last game so I know how all five of those girls were definitely feeling and I kind of respected that at half like once we got it within 11 or 10 I was like okay like we're with, you know I was like they're not going to shoot like they did in the first half like, they're a fantastic team but I mean that was impressive and once we got it within I think like seven to like four like within that range for like the rest of the second half I was like okay we're within you know distance like we can definitely make up this deficit but then I airballed that three and I was like, shoot, that's like a tough way to go out. Cause I was like, that's just so amazing. <laughs> but then they were shooting free throws and I was in between two Albany players and they were like talking to, to each other. Like we finally did it. Like we finally got the championship. And I was like, Oh, I was like, okay, now I'm a little bit mad. So then I hit that three and then I think we went in the timeout and I like, told the, told my teammate, I don't remember what I said. So they probably remember better, but I was like, we're not losing this game. I was like, we have fought back. We have, we're too close to now lose by like one. And then that's when like the next few possessions, I got the layup and then we obviously played defense and then hope made those free throws. And it was all just a blur after. I don't really remember, but I just think it kind of turned into anger of like, I don't want to see them raise the trophy instead of us. Um, That was kind of what like, it like, I don't know, just made me mad. And then to see them like kind of celebrate a little bit early, I was like, okay, like we got to come together and get this. So that's was no one else like heard that, but that personally for me was kind of what set me off a little bit. I've told coach this. I think I've told you this. This is a PSA to fans. There are some players you can get in their head. Just an FYI. I wouldn't tick off Madden. I wouldn't say overrated. I wouldn't say anything like that. I wouldn't say you won the game until 0.00. Just a free advice. Take it as you will. Ari, do we got you back? We got Ari. Okay. Can you hear us? Yes. We can hear you. What was that state championship game like? Down 18, nerves, any concerns? Kind of what walk us through that for you. Yeah, I was kind of like, like we like we have to win. Like we can't lose this. We can't let them beat us twice. We were down like 18. I don't know how much time was left, but we've like coach was saying, like, we've came back for more than this. And even if we didn't win from the comeback, we've had tight games, you know, we've came back like that. So that was kind of my mentality. Like we've done it in the past, like we can do it again. And we did, so we got up there, and then we won the game. Now, I'm going to go to Hope, because I know she's going to give me the answer I want, because I'm I'm a fan of a little bit of petty. Coach ain't going to give me petty. Hope, is it a little bit sweeter that the free throw that was missed, that Madden got the rebound and layup on, was from the same one who hit the game-winning free throws in Albany? A little bit sweeter? Man, no, you you're free to so great for too. picking you to talk about this. <laughs> but I'd say, yeah. <laughs> I, I had a feeling, but I said, I knew coach was going to be like, no, we're, he was going to be, you know, normal coach. But I'm like, Madden and Hope, they'll give me the patty that I'm liking. Now, coach, we'll come to you. Two-part question. Ever any concern when down 18? Ever any hesitation or any anything like that? And then I want to know the exact thought in your head when Madden got the ball down one start with the first one um definitely some doubt uh definitely some fear creeping in because that first half they shot the lights out um Mm -hmm. you know scouting report said that hey you know we're gonna live with some of these threes and they made them they made every single one we were trying to live with um and then not only that like Alyssa Santa as great as she is in the post she was hitting threes and um Garrett she was hitting threes so I was like whoa is this just their day and like this is the team of destiny. The five seniors, they're they're finally getting there, um, you know, what they worked so hard for. And then we slowly started to chip away. And we slowly started. I mean, we were playing a great half, too. We scored 44, but we'd never given up 55 and a half. I mean, we're not a team that pride ourselves on defense, per se. But, um, you know, we don't give up 55 and a half, mm-hmm. typically. So, um, you know, at going into halftime, we had an extra extended halftime because they were doing the Excel Awards. And, um, I decided to keep my coaches out of the locker room for the first five, six minutes because I knew that the girls like Madden, Hope, all of them were going to say something to each other about how bad they needed to work and how hard they needed to work. And I wanted to give them that moment because it, it was going to come down to their effort on the floor. 
Um, we knew exactly what their game plan was going to be. They were going to stay in the zone. Um, they were going to continue to attack as much as they could. Um, and we knew how to beat it, um, but it came down to like the leadership. And I remember um, faintly hearing like Madden, I shouldn't say faintly, like she was, she was animated about it. She was loud and she was telling us how bad we needed it. And um, other girls were stepping up too and saying like what we needed um, to do. And I think just giving them that space and that freedom to, to come together as a unit because they knew what they needed to do on the court was really um, important. They knew what I was going to say. Uh, they, they knew the whole game plan. Um, but what they, what they accomplished in the second half was huge. Uh, and what was the second part of the question? Madden gets the ball in her hands and you're down one first thought in your head. Uh, before that. So Ari made a huge play, um, to do the foul. She knew she had four. Um, they had just overturned the call to give them the ball, which we thought we were going to get the ball in the baseline. The overturn said that we shouldn't, Hey, there's Beckett. Bucket. <laughs> The, the overturn said that it was their ball, which was fair. Like, whatever, that's what the, the replay showed. So then we had to quickly shift because it wasn't a timeout to, from offense, we had a baseline out-of-bounds play drawn up to, okay, well, now we're on defense. We got to try and get a steal. If we don't get a steal, we got a foul. Ari having four fouls had to go get the foul, which was, you know, a sacrifice. Like, she knew that she, we, need, we needed this in the moment. So she went and got the foul. Really important play. Um, so for her to be able to sacrifice like that for her team was awesome. During the free throw, Madden looked at me and was like, what do I do? I said, well, we're down one. We got to go. Like we, I had one timeout left, I believe. And I wanted to use that if we needed it for later in the game, we had to try and get a quick shot up. She says like three hold for the last shot. I said, go. Um, and again, it's kind of full circle to the last Albany game where we did have the last shot. You've said it multiple times. Like if you give Madden a chance to take that last shot with a good look, she's not missing many of them. So she got the ball. Um, and again, McKenna boxed out the girl to the free throw line, which was awesome. Hope boxed out. Emma came in and grabbed the ball, found Madden, and Madden took off like like nothing I've ever seen before. I've seen the highlight a couple different times. Um, I don't know if she knows, like she might have blacked out during that moment too, which was really cool, but she makes the layup and does one of the coolest celebrations I've ever seen, um, you know, pointing her hand up in the air. And like there's a really cool angle of a little girl on the baseline just jumping up and down because she's super excited for Madden to make that shot. Um, you know, I don't think there's anyone in the country faster than Madden and Dan. Uh, so giving her that opportunity to go get the ball, go end to end in a transition opportunity. Um, you know, I love our chances that way. We score a lot in transition, giving Madden that chance is really, really special. And anytime she's got the ball in her hands, I, I feel very good about what's going to be the outcome, whether it's an assist, the shot, whatever it is. So I didn't think we'd ever come back from 18 down in the state tournament. Um, but we've got special talented players and girls that always believe. And that's the thing is that at halftime, I believe like it just came down to them saying, believe in ourselves like we got this we got to do it we know we can do it so special special is all i can say um the third one was obviously the hardest um and no disrespect to the the fergus falls championship or the the other albany championship this one like those girls came at us really really hard and um a lot of fortitude from our kids i also want to apologize to madden um i love to have like the video like i'm either trying to take videos of like game winners and stuff like that i didn't want to jinx you guys I've done it a few times this year at Game Winners where I have a, and then they miss it. So I wasn't recording because I was nervous I was going to jinx you guys. So my apologies. But I said that was a very exciting comeback. I saw a lady drop her ice cream in the stands when you hit the game, when, when you hit the layup. So that was the best part. So I won't take all your guys' night, but I said, well, first of all, we have two questions. We'll start with this. I always do this game. Coach is here this time. Well, first of all, before we go, sorry, three things. Coach, we got to give Emma a shout out. How did Emma grow the most as a player this year? Emma is just misconsistent. Um, putting together her highlight tape this year was really cool. Um, from her seventh and eighth grade year, she was she was a little twig out there, um, and she was always having to guard, uh, you know, really good players. Her seventh grade year, she guarded Olivia Olson, um, was fantastic. So her growth this year, she's always been the defensive dynamo, but her ability to score this year really took a big step up in her playmaking. So uh, her her biggest area of growth was um, confidence. So she hit the three ball really, really well. Talk about the mini ha game winner um, at our place. We're down one, Madden drives baseline. finds Emma somehow, and Emma hits a game winning three to put us up um, two, which was huge. And then again, Madden and Beckett are literally screaming in Emma's face like, let's go. So um, just the growth that she had in her confidence to be able to take that shot, the trust that Madden had in her because she knows how hard Emma's worked at that at her game. Really cool. So 
she's she's not nowhere near her peak emma's going to keep getting better and i'm super excited for her growth but you know she she could prioritize interviews over the timberwolves game once in a while so that's an area of growth for her I agree we're looking at you emma I agree yeah. we'll get on the four pete anywho hope oh, we'll end it with this what's your one word to describe the 2023 2024 repeat providence academy lions determined like it brooke what's your one word satisfied Ooh, ari what's your one word yeah ari yep for you can you hear me uh oh i can't hear you but you can hear if you can hear us i can't hear you unfortunately we'll come back mckenna what's your one word courageous love it you good ari we got you what's your one word yeah like desperate but like in the good way like desperate to win like it we'll start with bucket what's your one word overcoming <laughs> like it and now we'll start with we'll go with madden um i'm gonna say persistent and we'll have coach of one word no <laughs> Beck, I don't know if that's one word or two. We might have to have a hyphen in between those two, but we'll allow it, Beckett. Okay. Um, <laughs> I would say uh, our motto is family. Like we we treat each other like a family. So family. So for the family thing, let's give Coach a few more gray hairs to all the girls. When do we start talking for Pete? Right now. Right now. That's, right that's now. <laughs> I knew he was going to hate that question. That's why we saved it for last. Well, once again, ladies. Thank you so much for doing this for the third year in a row. Congratulations on a fantastic season. It was a joy throughout. Ups, downs, exciting. I cannot wait for next season as well. I think we have someone maybe who'll get 4,000 points. Beckett will probably get her 1,000. She's going to drop more people. We're going to have some more game winners. Come on now. Brooke, you're off to St. Thomas. St. Thomas, if you need a shooter, come on now. She's right there on campus. Come on now. So once again, ladies, thank you, thank you, thank you. It was, once again, always a pleasure. We knew it was coming. We talked about it at the beginning of the year. You put it out there. You manifested it. You got the three peep. Now we're waiting to add. Remember, no one's done this one yet in a row in Minnesota. Had a few three peeps. We haven't had this yet. Just saying. But thank you. Thank you, ladies, once again. Thank you, Eric. How much? Thank you. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yep, you too.